This video is made in response to a request for a dam buoy that can be used during search patterns uh, via Coast Guard's units and it was a follow-up to an original design that I had for our own unit which had a radar reflector and a uh, LED beacon. The radar reflector that we used uh, was a commercial radar reflector and varies in price between about sixty and a hundred dollars uh, whereas the flashing LED bank beacon is um, quite a good one with a two kilometer range about fifty dollars. The two parts of it are bolted together and uh, it's taken apart basically so that we can store it inside the cabin without taking up too much space. The idea was to make one that didn't have a radar reflector and they weren't interested in using a GPS tracking unit such as I've used with the um, Maniquim video uh, and it needed to be cheap. So I looked at some that would use existing lights that our units might have and within Coast Guard COPS there are two that are available. There's the ACR Hemi and that's basically designed to clip onto a PFD and then the uh, ACR C strobe. I didn't have a C strobe around but I did have an old uh, C strobe unit that uh, I also used to try and see whether I could make something with that. The original float that I'd used was just a hacked up piece of old fender and um, for this newer version and for um, recommending it for somebody else I picked one that was available commercially, a little poly float. Uh, it was only nine to ten dollars and the hole was about the right size for the poles that I was looking at. As far as poles are concerned uh, I found a really cheap one that was uh, available for just nine dollars. I'd looked at a variety of different types but I ended up with this paint roller pole that um, struck my fancy in that it was light. It extended to about two meters and it had this paint roller fitting on the top which made it much easier for me to be able to think about how I would attach the light. So to be able to get the lights on top of the pole, I used my 3D printer to create two different form factors, uh, one for each of the two different styles of lights that you can see there, and they just basically slot in. I have put a nylon zip tie around the smaller one, uh, there's a little groove for it to hang into, just to ensure that that one's not going to pop off the top. Now the weight of these two is quite different. The little uh, Hemi is only 38 grams with the holder, whereas the larger strobe has a big D-sized battery in it and the whole unit is quite a bit larger, so it's about four times the weight at 152 grams. Those then make some significant differences in terms of the balance that we're going to get. So to be able to balance it, on the original uh, I had quite a heavy radar and light that I needed to counterbalance so I had to have a lot of the pole underwater and um, so most of my extension of the pole is actually sitting underwater. With this one we want to get up much higher so I've ended up about a third, sorry about a quarter of the way up the extended pole. The pole extends to about two meters so I'm about half a meter up and that means that I should be able to get uh, about a meter and a half above the top of the float there and uh, that's really so that we can get above any sort of swell. With the much lighter payloads of just having a light rather than having the um, radar reflector there uh, I can get that balance from having the float much lower but I have used more chain to be able to do that. The chain itself I've used just on a kilo of chain and uh, I actually bought this lot quite often I've previous ones I've just had a bit of chain lying around. Now I, I would actually recommend going up slightly heavier and probably to about 1.2 to 1.3 kilograms is what you're going to be looking at. The advantage of using chain uh, as a weight is that um, well it's quite flexible it folds up and it does provide quite good drag when it's in the water because we don't want the whole thing to blow around too much. So I went down and I did some float trials just to make sure that they would actually stand up and that's where I found that I was a bit under in terms of the chain weight um, so I couldn't have the poles fully extended. With the uh, strobe I'm, uh, I would 
reduced it um, so it's really only giving about one meter above the float and with the Hemi I can get about 1.2 uh, to 1.3 meters above um, if we add some extra chain onto that you'll see that there's still quite a lot of buoyancy in that float um, that would let you extend the the pole up so uh, the nice thing about this is you can actually find and fine tune the values that you want by how far out you extend the actual pole so we'll have a quick uh, look at some float trials so this is it floating with the full head I'll just turn that on turn that on there so it's flashing but that one is not able to be fully extended because of the weight on the top. That's using a strobe, which should be good at night. And with the smaller head, it can be a little bit better. Uh, we could put a heavier weight underneath and just get that light going. The issue really comes in with the lights. The lights, when I was constructing it and had those lights at home, were, uh, I thought, quite bright and they seemed to be quite good. But when I saw it on the water, really it was almost impossible to tell that lights were going during the daytime. Uh, they were quite a disappointment. Clearly they'll work well at night time, but really night time only. So to be able to see this during the daytime, you're really going to have to add a flag to it. Uh, we would of course wrap some um, fluorescent tape or something around it but um, yeah flag for the daytime uh, or you're going to have to go for a much much brighter light some other things that i tried well uh, as i was playing around with this i played around with a paint roller i straightened out a paint roller to fit on the top of the um, paint roller stick that pole that i had uh, used there and um, that was quite nice i made a little uh, attachment for the um, Hemi to slot in the top there so that could sit up the top and that can extend it up by another half a meter if you've got the weight balanced out and the roller itself uh, would be quite good because it gives you a um, something that you could attach a flag to and it will spin around uh, quite nicely if you wanted to do that the only problem is that that whole thing adds another 250 grams or so uh, finally, um, as a work in progress, uh, I've been looking at some PVC pipe. Um, if you think of going to the drainage um, plumbing section, uh, you'll find different pipes that will slot together. I've chosen two here that become quite long. Uh, unfortunately, the float system that I was trying to have a go with, with this old cone and some um, expanding foam hasn't worked yet so I'm going to have to change the float that I've got there but that pipe basically stretches out and I just have a little pin that goes through uh, two holes uh, to be able to hold it at its full extension I've put a little stopper at the bottom with a ring that I can attach the chain on and that one should work quite well once I get the flotation working properly so work in progress but PVC pipe a lot more flexible big advantages that you will never have to worry about it rusting um, it is actually quite a lot more expensive than the pole extension uh, paint pole that I had used above so I hope that's of some assistance uh, if you are going to try and construct one of your own uh, if you do get um, stuck or want to have some help with the uh, holders for the lights um, if they're the same as the ones that I've demonstrated here easy enough for me to give you the files for that uh, or perhaps print them for you best of luck